For this video, we're going to drive down the road a little ways, and then I'm going to tell you a story. This is Maggie's Chapel behind me. It's a little church just down the road from where I was born and raised, from where I live today. We don't say Maggie's Chapel, we say Maggie's Chapel. Maggie's Chapel is how it kind of comes out, but it is Maggie's Chapel. It's an old church, and uh, during my childhood, it was always here. We attended this church some when I was a small girl with Granny and Pap and, and my older brother, uh, Steve, for sure. I can't remember if Paul would have been, if he would have attended it with us, or if by then we went to another church church, but I have great memories of it. Probably my first memory is I remember after church would let out and kids would be out playing. I remember playing out in the graveyard with some of the other kids waiting on the, the grown-ups to actually get through talking so we could go on, and I wanted to go on. I wanted to go home. Maybe I was hungry that day. I remember being inside, laying on Granny's lap while someone was preaching, and wanting to stick my hands out the windows because it was hot and they would they would raise the windows the church windows and they put like a stick in them to hold them up and she was worried if I if I pushed that stick out the window would fall on my arm and hurt me so I remember I remember that uh, very well lots of different memories of family and, and and good times being here it always has such a good feeling Another memory I have, which is kind of more sad, but still a memory, is that this is where my mamaw Marie, her funeral was at. So I was in fifth grade when she died. It was Pap's mother. Um, and of course, I was. it impressed upon me the funeral because I knew she was my mamaw and I knew she was gone and I missed her. But mostly because that was the first time I ever saw my daddy, saw Pap cry with kind of big hiccup and sobs because he was so sad that he'd lost his mother. Um, so that really left an imprint on me. But it's also a very interesting church in the fact that even when Pap was a boy over the years, it shared itself in those days, not today, but in those days it shared itself between the Methodist and the Baptist faith. So that's pretty an, a pretty unusual thing for a church to be split between two, two denominations. And Pap said it really didn't matter in those days because everyone was, uh, you know, everyone knew each other. Everyone was either family or neighbors and friends and that everybody just got along. And more often than not, the same people went to both services that they had. Uh, so I always thought that was a really, really interesting thing about the church. And there's even a sign around back. I'm going to show you an old sign that kind of shows testament to that fact that it was shared by both. So this is the first thing I wanted to show you. This is my great-grandfather's uh, grave, Benjamin Wilson, Benjamin Harrison, but they called him Bird, so that's what the bird is there for. And you can see he was born in 1885 and died in 1957. So of course, I never knew him. I only heard stories about him from Pap and my other family members. But it is interesting, Benjamin, he's the reason that we live in Brasstown. He's the reason. He lived, he was born and raised in Madison County, North Carolina, and he brought his family uh, first to Graham County and then on to Cherokee County. And during that, they moved around some other uh, back and forth between some areas too. But he's the very reason that we are here today, that my Wilson line is actually in Brasstown. 
So an interesting thing about Benjamin's grave is he has two graves. He has this grave here, and he's actually buried here. Pap was at his funeral, so I know this is where he was buried. But his first wife, her name was Dora, Dora, but we they called her Dory. She died when my Papa Wade, that was his mother, was 12 years old. And because they were from Madison County, they took her back to Madison County to be buried there. Well, in later years, when uh, after Benjamin had died, her children, not Papa Wade, but some of her other children, they decided they wanted, you know, they wanted at least for maybe it to look like Benjamin was with her in Madison County. Uh, maybe they were thinking about, you know, genealogical people looking later in years and they would, they would see their mother and father there together, but he's not actually buried there. He's actually buried here. Now he married later after she had died, he married someone else, my great grandmother, Carrie, who I can remember. And she had also been married before her husband had died. So she's buried with her husband in Warren, not too far from here. But Benjamin is buried here by himself at Maggie's Chapel. Here's one more gravestone I wanted to share with you. Maggie Martin, 1868 to 1892. It's when she lived. Several years ago, I began to wonder about Maggie's Chapel. I began to wonder who Maggie was. Well, I had been here and wandered around the graveyard enough to know that I had seen this before, Maggie Martin. And then I also noticed that she died a long time ago. And so I began to wonder if she was Maggie. Well, it led me on this journey that I'm gonna tell you about a story. And you'll have to wait till the end of the story to see if I was right when I wondered if this was the Maggie the church was named after. So when I first started wondering about Maggie, I wanted to know the answer to who Maggie's Chapel was named after. I did what I always did in those days before Pap died. Any question I had, whether it was about gardening, about life, or about something like this, I called Pap. And I said, you know, I want to know who Maggie's Chapel was named after. And he said, you know, that's a good question. I've never thought about it. And I said, well, who do you think it was? Do you remember somebody named Maggie? And he said, you know, I do remember somebody named Maggie. He said, I remember when Ab Bullard, Ab Bullard was the man's name, and his wife, they moved to this country from Cherry Log, Georgia. 
Now, just that's funny because if you're from a local person, then you know Cherry Log, Georgia is not very far from Brasstown. Uh, not, it's certainly not, wouldn't be considered a different country. But that was the way that Pap talked. He talked about the area like this country, and he just meant really the settlement. He also said settlement. Anyway, he said, I remember when Ab Bullard and his wife moved to this country from Cherry Log, Georgia, they brought uh, their old mother with them. Now, he didn't tell me if it was his mother, his wife's mother, or Ab's mother, but her name was Maggie. He said, and I remember her. And he said, I also remember at one time she was trying to raise money and because she, she wanted to build Maggie's Chapel. He said, oh, I think there might have been a church there. There was already graves there, but it wasn't nothing more than a lean-to. And I think it was her. I bet that's what it was what it was named after. So I said, okay, well, that, that kind of dashed all my hopes of it being this story about Maggie Martin, the tombstone that I'd seen, you know, for so many times over my life and wondered about. But I said, okay, and that, that sounds good. Well, in the meantime, I wrote about it on The Blind Pig and the Acorn, uh, and I'll go ahead and tell you right now, me and Pat both, you know, we probably should have really quickly realized it could not have been that Maggie because of those graves that were so much older than when Pap was a boy, you know. So what, that should have been our clue that it was already kind of being called that. Uh, but we both just were just thinking, uh, kind of brainstorming, and I just latched on to his story about Ab Bullard and thought, well, that's probably it. But at the same time, I was, you know, I was thinking all this stuff. I was writing on the Blind Pig and the Acorn, my blog, and when I wrote about Maggie's Chapel and me wondering about it, someone said, well, you know, if it was part Methodist it, it, some of the time, you should definitely contact the Methodist um, organization, whatever, the headquarters, whatever they told me to do, and ask if they had a record of of the church. Maybe they know who founded it. Maybe it was a Methodist church, you know, and that, that was why it was called that. So I thought, well, it can't can't hurt to ask, you know. So I did. I, I sent them an email, sent an inquiry, and wanted to know if they could tell me more about it. Well, they told me they had no record, <laughs> no record of the church, which kind of makes sense since it was Baptist and Methodist. So that was just a complete dead end. They had, had no uh, no record, no recollection of it, no no mention of it, anything. It's just, you know, that was a door shut really quickly. Well, about that same time, I, I stumbled onto a site where someone was talking about the history of Cherokee County, um, and there was a lady that kept kind of, I don't remember at this time if she actually manned the site or if she just, um, like if she was just most, like a contributor that was contributing a lot. So I thought, well, what the heck? I've already asked, you know, these people that I don't know at the Methodist place if they know anything about it. I'll ask her. So I asked her and thought it'll be a real long shot, and she probably won't even never answer me back. You know how those type of forum uh, type websites are. But I couldn't believe it. She answered me back, and she answered me back very quickly. And she had some information about the church. More than that, she solved the mystery, the mystery of who Maggie was. And it's so much to remember, and she said it in such a nicer way than I could say it. I'm just going to read it to you, what she actually, what she found and what she told me. So the first thing, Jean was her name, what she sent me was, I found out more about Maggie Martin, whose gravestone image you sent. I found information about Maggie and her birth family in the following reference books. So she looked in uh, the History of Cherokee County, North Carolina, Volume 1, and then she looked in Our Heritage, The History of Cherokee County, North Carolina. So this was the summary that she sent me. Margaret Eugenia Maggie Collette was born August 14, 1869 and died 1892. Her parents were Hugh Mack Collett and his first wife, Amanda Stalkup. Hugh went on to marry three more times. Maggie was one of ten children of Hugh and Amanda Stalkup, Collett, Collett, I don't know how you'd say it really, Collett is how my accent says it. Maggie's paternal grandparents were Abraham, Abram, and Mary, Polly, Stuart Collett, who were the first settlers in Valleytown, Cherokee County, North Carolina. Maggie's birth family played an important role in the settlement of Cherokee County, North Carolina. According to these sources, her grandparents, Abram and Polly, arrived in Valleytown, called the Cherokee Nation when they arrived, in 1830. 
Abram received grants of land from the U.S. government amounting to hundreds of acres, but he chose to purchase the same land from his close neighbor and friend, Junaluska, the chief of the Cherokee Nation, thus preserving good relations. Abram was elected ranger from Fort Butler, later the town of Murphy, in 1839. Well, that was all really interesting, and I was so glad that Jean sent it to me, and, and it was really impressive how, um, you know, Maggie, that I'd been wondering about how her family really played a role in kind of the history of Cherokee County, but that still didn't really answer, answer my question. But thankfully, Jean also had the answer to that, too. Then she told me, The Heritage of Cherokee County, Volume 2, has a family history which I believe answers your question. Among the family histories in this volume was one titled Julius John B. and Maggie Colette Martin, uh, number 1094 on page 259 for anyone that has the book. This family lived in the Brasstown section of Cherokee County and they were responsible for the formation of this cemetery. Here's an excerpt. One Sunday afternoon, when Julius and Maggie walked to the top of the hill above where they lived, Maggie pointed to a place and told Julius that is where she wished to be buried. A short time later, Maggie passed away. Julius saw that her wish was granted. He gave the land for the cemetery. Soon others were interred there and a small church was built. The church is known as Maggie's Chapel. Both Baptist and Methodist congregations use the church. So that was that was the answer to my to my question and I was right in wondering if that gravestone was Maggie. She went on to say Maggie and her husband Julius had three sons, Hamilton, Verlin, and Jeff. After Maggie died, Julius went on to marry again. He and his new wife, Ada, 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 I would say, had nine daughters and moved to the March Creek section, just the next community over from Brasstown, of Cherokee County. Many of his descendants still live in Martins Creek and the surrounding area today. So Maggie would have been 24 years old when she died, a young mother with those three sons. And you can just imagine, you know, young mothers with three little kids are typically not talking about when they die where they want to be buried. So that kind of tells me she must have been sick and maybe they knew that her death was imminent or coming soon or whatever, which it was. Uh, but such a bittersweet, heartbreaking story to think about. I also, um, the bittersweet part for me is, of course, all the memories that I have tied into the church, you know, all the different uh, from the joyous times to the sad times, like my, my grandmother's dying and her funeral being here. It's, it's all ties in together somehow for me, that wonderful history that's often passed down in Appalachia. It, it's a joke, but it's true that everyone, everyone is connected in a way, and if we know you, we want to connect you. We want to know where you fit into the, play, into the giant family tree in our, in our brains that we carry around with us. You'll often, people, first thing they'll ask you is, who's your people? They want to know how you connect. Well, even when I found out all this stuff from Jean, I was tickled to death, of course, to figure out that I knew who Maggie was. Uh, I was saddened by her story that she died so young. But I was, um, my, I was joyous to know about the Martin line being moved over into the Martins Creek. Many of those Martins are dear friends. I know those descendants. I went to school with them. I went to church with them. Uh, you know, they're, they're pillars of the community, all those things. I think about all the influences that, that those lives went on after, uh, you know, sadly Maggie died, but Julius married again with Ada and they went on and had more children and how the Martins, Martins Creek is even named for it. So really joyous there. Another thing I also thought of when I, when I heard all this from Jean was, you know, I, I talked about when you're, I think I did, when you drive by here, the, you can see the, the church, Maggie's Chapel, you can see it like a sentinel kind of sentry up there on the hill. You can see it through the woods if you look from the highway, but you don't even have to avert your eyes from the road to actually see the sign that says Maggie's Chapel. 
Another thing that I notice in this same little stretch every year, this time of the year, spring of the year, is I notice daffodils blooming. I notice yellow bells blooming. Uh, and, and in the woods, there's no houses there. But I know, I, I've learned that during my lifetime, that any time I see those daffodils, I know that meant sometime, somewhere, there was a house there at some point in history. Well, after I read this, I immediately thought, after Jean shared these findings with me, I immediately thought, those, those daffodils that I see every year, were they Maggie's? Did she plant them around her house? Uh, it's, they're just over here behind me, off in a little, little gully there. So it makes sense if there was a house there, she planted the flowers. Then when her and Julius was talking about her probably impending death and where she wanted to be buried, this would have been the hill, the hill above. Um, it, just wonderful history when you think about that. I think Maggie would be pleased today that people, that the church is still here, that other people like my, my grandfather Benjamin has been buried here, many other people too. I think maybe she'd be pleased that here I am, a Brasstown girl, that I, you know, it's been many years now, but that I went on a hunt to find out more about her and, and to share her story with the world. Of course, I had a lot of help along the way. I had Pap. Um, he didn't direct me in the right way, but he cheered me on until I did find out the truth about Maggie. And then I had Jean, wonderful person I never met, never spoke to again after our little exchanges about that, but who really helped me put all the pieces together so that I knew the story of Maggie's Chapel. I hope you enjoyed hearing the story of Maggie's Chapel. As always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by often and help me celebrate Appalachia, which for me is a whole lot of the history and also those wonderful connections, how they connect to each other as we look back through the past, always with an eye to the future.